So I'm going to move on then to talk about the metabolism of the particles that carry cholesterol. Because this, this is the story that actually has the much sort of bigger impact on, on heart health. Okay? So LDL and HDL have opposing roles with regard to the transport of cholesterol. Again, LDL carries cholesterol away from the liver. HDL carries cholesterol back to the liver, um, both with regard, to, with regard to the tissues, okay, the tissues outside of the liver. And included in that large umbrella category of tissues, is macrophages. Okay? So macrophages are important cells in the immune system. They float around in the bloodstream and um, play an important role in sort of cleaning up the blood and cleaning up, uh, uh, cleaning up debris, essentially, is the way I think of macrophages. And again, I'm a biochemist, so someone who studies macrophages might have a much more eloquent description of what they do. Um, at any rate, it's important that we include this, that we have this in the forefront of our mind in thinking about what HDL and LDL to, uh, do because macrophages are an important um, player in terms of development of those fatty plaques. Okay? So people talk about LDL, people call LDL bad cholesterol, and people call HDL good cholesterol, but there's no difference in the cholesterol. That would be like calling the money that you pay to the IRS bad money, and the money that is refunded back to you good money, but it's all money. Right? It's the IRS that's bad. No, I'm just kidding. There's no one here that works for the IRS, right? No. Um, so it's really, the, um, it's really what happens to the particle that's good versus bad. Okay? Because it's all, it's all just cholesterol inside of it. But it's the metabolism of the particle that's key. Because, again, L uh, macrophages play into this. play into this. LDL-filled macrophages can accumulate in vessel walls and lead to formation of these atheromas. Okay, so let's talk about the normal life cycle of an LDL and start to figure out what it is that's bad about these particles. Um, so, as I said earlier, there was that sort of stay tuned about what happens to the VLDL remnants. About 50% of the VLDL remnants in circulation wind up being taken up into the liver and degraded. But there's another 50% that winds up getting turned into LDL. Okay, so LDL arise from VLDL remnants. And this occurs through an interaction between the VLDL remnant and an enzyme called hepatic lipase. Hepatic lipase, so here's our, the third lipase that we've encountered. So again, what does a lipase do? Chops up triglycerides. Yeah, breaks down triglyceride so that the components can move across the cell membrane. Okay. So hepatic lipase essentially depletes the VLDL remnant completely of triglyceride, and that triglyceride winds up again in the liver. And what we've got as a result is an LDL particle, which is composed solely of cholesterol esters. We also lose affinity for this APOE particle. So APOE is lost and it's returned to HDL, okay, our sort of lending library of proteins. So here we are. So the LDL will now bind to an LDL receptor that's expressed on a cell that needs cholesterol. Okay, so any cell that uh, uh, needs cholesterol, such as you know, a cell that needs to divide and make more membrane, or a cell that's making steroid hormones, will we'll express LDL receptors and bring LDL in. Okay, so back to the good, the bad, and the ugly. 
the problem with LDL is that it has a part of the problem is that it has a very long half-life. So it can circulate in the bloodstream for a very long time. The, the typical half-life of an LDL is something like one and a half to two days relative to a number of hours for the triglyceride-rich um, lipoproteins. Okay, so we've got these molecules circulating and they're subject to damage. So they can be damaged by uh, oxygen-free radicals, by any toxins that are floating around in the cell, i.e. cigarette smoke. Um, they can be modified by free glucose. Okay, so any of these damaging agents results in modification or aging, essentially, of the particle. And this now makes it so that it can bind to a new type of receptor. It increases its affinity for a particular type of receptor that's expressed on macrophages. So this is called a, sca a scavenger receptor. There are several different kinds of scavenger receptors. This is the uh, type A scavenger receptor. Okay, so this now, this damage, allows the macrophages to take up the LDL by receptor-mediated endocytosis, that engulfing process. The problem is that there's no cholesterol sensor in the macrophage with regard to the expression of this receptor. So whereas other cells in your body will have this exquisite sensing system and won't take in any more cholesterol than it actually needs, the macrophages will just keep on chomping it down. And this will ultimately result in a morphological change from a macrophage into what is called a foam cell. And this is a great big, relative to the size of the macrophage, the foam cells are much larger and they're just chock full of cholesterol. And so this is a micrograph showing you the difference between a macrophage and a foam cell. And I'm skipping over a lot of the pathological detail, but the important thing to realize is that foam cells are one of the key players in accumulation of lipid and the formation of these atheromatous plaques in the vessel walls. Okay? So this is why LDL is bad is because it can be damaged, taken up into macrophages, the macrophages can become foam cells, and this is an important um, step toward development of, of plaques. But, fortunately, Um, we have the potential to rescue the situation with HDL. So this is talking about why HDL is good. Um, HDL, the, the, first of all, the metabolism of HDL is extremely complex. So I'm not doing any justice to the details of this process. This is a very, very thumbnail overview because there are many types of HDL and their metabolism is, is extremely complex. So suffice it to say that HDL are made by both the intestine and the liver. I talked about HDL as being a key sort of lending library of proteins, but the only one we're gonna worry about right now is a protein called APOA. APOA is important because it can dock at a different type of scavenger receptor that's expressed on the surface of macrophages and also on the surface of other cells that have excess cholesterol. So if a cell finds itself with cholesterol in excess, it will express these scavenger receptors 
it's essentially a signal to HDL to come over and take some of this excess cholesterol away. So the binding of the HDL to the scavenger receptor, this type B receptor, allows it to take up excess cholesterol, and it will now bring that cholesterol back to the liver. Okay? So HDL is essentially opposing the action of LDL. So it makes sense, hopefully, then, that the higher your HDL, the better. because the less likely you are then to accumulate a whole lot of lipid in these macrophages.